Good morning. Welcome to worship at Algoma Boulevard United Methodist Church in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I am Pastor Kathy Wiegand and I am so glad you are here with us today. For children's time today, kids, you don't need anything. Uh, you just need your eyes and a good sense of imagination. Um, sometimes we have tech issues, sometimes our video stops or our sound isn't right. Uh, we apologize for that. We'll always work to fix it as soon as we can. Sorry about being muted first thing uh, this morning. Uh, this week, the church purchased a streaming copyright license so that we can add music to worship. So I'm doing new technology today, which is why we're having some sound issues, but we'll get it figured out. We practiced a lot, and I'm sure that uh, we'll get stuff going uh, today. A huge thank you to Todd, who spent so much time uh, not only working on music, but helping me uh, learn the technology that we would need um, for this morning. He spent countless hours, and we are grateful. Thanks also to Lisa Marie, uh, to Jennifer and uh, to Todd and Nancy who made the music happen today. Uh, what a gift that they are willing to uh, safely make music together. I'm leading worship this morning from my house, as you can tell. Um, I've got a cat here with me today, um, and I would imagine that you have interesting things running through worship this morning as well. As we worship, we know that as we gather together, this is holy ground. I went to church this week and I grabbed uh, some candles and I grabbed the cross so that we could remind ourselves of God's presence. Uh, if you would like to light a candle wherever you're worshiping from, please do so. Um, as we start in worship today, as we begin this time together, a reminder that Christ draws close to us. His presence isn't announced so much in a searing light or in angelic song. It's in a gradual recognition of something that is holy, that's enmeshed in part of our everyday lives, as simple as salt, as common as bread, as unexpected as light entering the darkness. This is the presence of Christ that we see in our everyday lives. And for that today, we give our thanks and our praise. And as we do that today, we'll begin by singing together step by step. So give me just a second and the music will start. Kids, as we prepare for children's time today, uh, we know that we see symbols of God in lots of things. And we can experience God in the everyday stuff that is around us. But sometimes we don't really notice it. I want you to look around at the room you're sitting in right now. Adults, you can do it too. I want you to find two different things that are green. Look around, 
what two things can you see in your room that are green? Did you find them? I can look out my windows and see green grass, and I can also look into my kitchen and see a green vase. I bet you found some green stuff too. Now, I want you to look around the room and see if you can find something that is soft and cuddly. Can you find something? Are you looking? Is it good and soft and squishy? As you saw, I had a cat walk through before. They're pretty squishy and cuddly and soft. Else, I have pillows on my couch. Those are good too. I bet you found something at your house. The last thing I want you to look for is to look around your room and see who you can see and tell me if you can see something that is alive. Look around. What do you see? What is alive? I think when we look for certain things, we can usually find them, even if we hadn't really noticed them before, hadn't really paid attention to them before. It's the same with how we look for God in the stuff that's around us. I brought home a cross from the church and I brought home some candles from the church and they remind us of what it feels like when we get to worship together in the sanctuary. It's a nice reminder. The cross reminds us of Jesus dying. The candles remind us of the light of the Holy Spirit in the world. Behind me, on this side, this side, it's hard to point at things. Over here, <laughs> I also have a fishing net. And the fishing net can remind us of the stories that Jesus told. I also have rainbow ribbons tied throughout all of it. And those are reminders from the book of Genesis, the reminder of God's promise to us. They also remind us to share God's love just like Jesus did with a radical welcome for all people just as they are. These are things that we can see and they help us know God. So I want you to look around the room that you're in again and I want you to think about things that might make you think about God. I bet you have some stuff in your house that can remind you about faith, remind you about Jesus, remind you about love, and all of those most important things. If I were to look around the room, I can tell you that in the background, I can see tomato plants. We planted them at seeds and they've been growing. We've been watering them. And the miracle of seeds with dirt and water and light reminds me that God is working in this amazing world and growth happens because God is there helping it happen. In front of me today is my kitchen and it's kind of a mess today because last night my son and I made fish tacos for our family and I think we might have used every dish in the house. That mess reminds me to be grateful that we have enough food to eat it can remind me to be grateful that I get to spend time with my family and in the everyday stuff around us. We know that God is always there. So this week, I want everyone to be on the lookout for God in your house. When you go outside and play, be looking for God. When you're in your room, be looking for God because God is always waiting for us to notice. Let's pray. God, help us see you in the everyday parts of our lives. Help us remember to look for Jesus in everything we do. Thanks for being with us all of the time. Help us pay attention so we can show others your presence and your love. Amen. We have each been welcomed into this space of worship, and it is holy. And we are each called to walk with Christ as we praise God together. Walking with Christ is a journey of faith. We might not always know where God is leading us and maybe we're not even sure we can see the path in front of us. We might not understand the circumstances around us. We might not have answers to the questions of why. And sometimes we don't like how things unfold before us. There's hardship and suffering and illness and loss, and they challenge us and require us to trust. 
we won't always see God's hand or recognize God's voice in our lives. But walking with Christ is a journey of faith. Therefore, we choose to trust even in the midst of doubt and fear. We look always for evidence of God's grace and God's mercy. And we hope that in the one whose faithfulness and love is never ending, we might always know his presence. So let us walk with Christ today. Hallelujah. Amen. We recommit ourselves to walking with Christ by noticing all the ways that God shows up in our lives, all the ways that Christ calls us to live out our faith. And when we gather for worship, we take time in prayer together. We share moments that we have experienced God's presence with us. We lift up our joys and our concerns. During the next song, uh, you're able to share your uh, prayer requests in the chat and know that we will be praying with you throughout the week. Also, as we sing together, I'd like you to prayerfully consider how you can share your tithes and your offerings with the church because your gifts make such a difference in the ministry that we can do now and the ministry we can do when we gather back together. Our next song reminds us of all the ways that we are connected through our faith. And that includes sharing our gifts, our prayers, and lifting our voices together in song. So let us be in a time together of praise in our singing, of prayer, and of giving. As we come to a time of prayer, I know of some of your prayer requests, uh, with apologies, I probably can't see all of them in the chat, but we know we'll be praying for each other this week. Uh, we had a God moment shared from Anne. Uh, they were out for a walk and saw someone looking up uh, and trying to see something, and they asked what she was doing, and she could hear a bird singing and was trying to find it. So together they all looked until they saw a bright red cardinal in the tops of the trees singing its heart out, uh, and she said it was one of those just amazing moments where God is present. Uh, joys uh, for the daffodils that are blooming, the buds on the trees, for all the ways that new life is coming into the world. We give thanks to God. 
also prayers of great joy for all the ways people are reaching out to each other and stepping up and helping. It is such a powerful thing to witness God's love moving in this world, especially right now. We have some concerns uh, today. Um, Wayne and Jeanette shared that uh, they have a new great-grandson, which is a joy, uh, but he has been in the hospital. So we ask for prayers uh, for their uh, new little guy who is in Arizona. Also, uh, people have been sharing with me privately concerns about kids and grandkids and, and important people in their lives. And um, without sharing names, I just ask that you lift up all those people who are worried about someone and uh, trying to care from some, for someone long distance. It is hard. Uh, prayers coming from Deb and Dan. Their son, Matthew, and his family are in quarantine for two weeks. They're Three-year-old child care had um, someone who was exposed to COVID-19, and so everyone is on quarantine. And of course, a three-year-old doesn't really understand that very well. So uh, prayers for them in these two weeks, uh, for their patience, for some understanding, and for all of the challenges that come with a three-year-old. And certainly for all of the people who are struggling uh, with staying in and finding ways to do life a little differently right now. Also a prayer request, a good friend of ours uh, had uh, his mother pass away this week, so our prayers go with the Crandall family. Um, they knew Betsy was sick and was going to die, but it happened much sooner than expected. And of course, in this time, it is hard for people to show up uh, to offer them strength and love and care. Um, so I encourage all of us to find ways to reach out to the people we know who are struggling, who are hurting, uh, who are seeking uh, ways to live through this time uh, while experiencing um, the tough stuff too. Uh, for this and all of the other prayers that we hold in our hearts, let us come before our God in prayer. God, how grateful we are that no matter where we are on our journey with you, we can always turn to you in prayer. We offer our thanks that you are with us as we travel, and we ask that your spirit will fall on each one of us as we come together in prayer. God, you know that some of us are struggling with meaninglessness as we travel on this road of life. We know that others are struggling with issues of health or caregiving. Some are struggling with relationships and some struggle with loneliness. Some are desperate as they experience unemployment and others are complaining about the job they have. Some are struggling with resentment and others speak before they think and act without a thought for how others feel. God, we struggle with issues of war and brutality. We strive to make sense of death and loss and the many things that in this world cause so much harm. Our loving God, whatever it is that we struggle with today, we know that prayer is the safe place to surrender and to let go of that struggle. So grant us the courage to let go of the outcome and to release our burdens to you that we might find ways to walk the road of life with a lighter step as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ who teaches us to live and has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. We're starting in verse uh, 13. This is the walk to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about these things that had happened. Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. 
They said, as he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still and they looked sad. And then one of them answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who is the prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they came, they did not find his body there. They came back and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself that had been said in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening up the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and they returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. And they told him what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And here ends our scripture reading for today. They were walking and talking. Two disciples who had left Jerusalem walking along the road that day, leaving Jerusalem for another town. They were trying to make sense of all that had happened. They were talking about all of it. And Jesus joined them along the way, and they didn't recognize him. It makes you wonder how often in our own journeys of life, Jesus shows up and we don't realize that he's with us. How many times do you think Jesus has walked alongside and we just didn't know? Jesus joined them that day as a stranger. He came alongside them, he walked with them, and he asked them about their lives and what was going on. They were really struggling with how to believe all that had happened. They weren't making the connection between all that had been said about the Messiah in the scriptures and how it connected with all the events that had just happened in Jerusalem. So Jesus taught them as they walked, and he helped them make that important connection. And they walked, and they talked, and they came to understand. But they still didn't know that it was him. I think there's something powerful about being in conversation while you're engaged in something else. Since we have been sheltering in place, Mike and I take the dog out for a walk nearly every day on the trails behind Traeger School. I think most of our most important conversations that we're having right now happen on those walks. Also in years of doing mission trips with all age groups of people, I can tell you that some of the most meaningful conversations happen when you're painting doors or pulling weeds or fixing or helping or serving. 
having mostly survived parenting two, four teenage boys, if I want a good conversation with one of them, it's usually best to jump in the car and go for a drive. So I can understand how Jesus, while walking along a road with a couple of people, could explain and make connections between the prophecies and the events of the day, and that walking and talking might have been the best way for it to happen. Away from the distractions sometimes is a great place to start. Jesus joined them that day as a stranger. They didn't know him, but when he joined them, he was welcome. He just became another person on the journey. How well do we do that with strangers in our own lives? Do we as individuals openly welcome strangers to journey with us? And how well do we as a community of faith, as a congregation, openly welcome strangers to journey with us, to become church family grounded and growing together in faith. The story from scripture today is about a journey where people meet as strangers, where the strangers become guests, and the guest has an opportunity to become a host. It's a story that teaches us to radically welcome people to walk together, to gather around Christ's table, and to go out into the world to stand alongside one another and to share the good news. It's about learning to be in this journey together to strengthen our bonds with Jesus Christ and with one another. Stranger, guest, host. Jesus did all three of them in our scripture reading. He appeared to those disciples as a stranger on the road, and then he became their guest. And finally, in the breaking of the bread, he became their host. And that offers us critical guidance so that we can do a better job of welcoming and including people in how we live out our faith in this world. I think it's fair to say we've all been strangers at some point in our lives. When we move to a new place or when we start a new job or a new grade, maybe when we walk into a church building for a first time. We've all been strangers in our lives and if we think back to how that felt, we know that it's uncomfortable. We know it's a little scary. We know it's hard to put ourselves in that position. Sometimes we won't even try something new because we don't like how uncomfortable we know we're going to feel. But Jesus that day joined two disciples. They were strangers. But the disciples showed hospitality. And in the culture and at that time, that would have been expected. It was an ex expectation that love be shown to strangers, which is so different from how we live in our culture today, a culture that teaches us to approach strangers with fear and skepticism and caution. As disciples, we are called to work our way back to that cultural expectation of loving strangers and welcoming and extending radical hospitality. Not only did the disciples let the stranger walk with them, they had meaningful conversation. It was more than just walking together. And then when they arrived at the destination, they invited Jesus to come inside to eat with them, to stay with them in a safe space for the night. Engaging and welcoming and loving strangers pushes us to live out our discipleship in new ways. As a congregation, together we seek ways to move outside of our building and engage strangers wherever they are in their journey. We reach out to the food pantry and to the warming shelter and when we do that, we help strangers. We reach out to the kids and the families and the staff at Reed School next door, 
and on some Wednesdays, they become our guests. There's so many ways that we can walk with people and let others walk with us. We do it every time we speak to strangers after worship, when we gather together, instead of going to immediately talk to our friends. We do it every time we get to know someone who is different from us, a different race, a different culture, a different nationality or sexual orientation or gender identity, a different age or financial background or family configuration. We can get to know and welcome strangers so that we can become friends on this journey of faith. I know so many stories from people in this congregation who have engaged strangers and have built relationships. It can be as easy as noticing someone new and being kind. It can be as simple as opening up to a friend group for a stranger to step inside the circle. Writer Glennon Doyle wrote, if you're standing with other women in a circle and there's a woman standing alone in your circle's vicinity, the thing to do is notice her, smile at her, move over a bit and say, hi, come join us. Even if she decides not to join your circle, even if she looks at you like you might be crazy, inviting her is still the thing to do. The advice is meant both for literal and figurative circles. Widen your circle all of the time. She also says, horseshoes are better than circles. Leave space, always leave space. Horseshoes of friends are better than circles of friends. Life can be so lonely, so stand in horseshoes. We can use her wisdom, I think, in so many places of our lives as we seek to follow in Jesus' example, to be intentional about welcoming strangers. The disciples extended a welcome. And when they arrived at their destination, Jesus kept going. And they said, please stay and offered food and a place to sleep. They pushed beyond that initial kindness into something that was more connected and more personal. We're called to treat strangers as guests, to look out into the margins of our community, into the edges of society, and to open our circle wide, to make horseshoes, to welcome everyone in, to welcome and feed and work for justice, to share grace, to share rest. As members of Christ's body at work in the world today, we show Jesus' presence in the world every time we practice hospitality. When we open the circle, when we care for the body, mind, and soul of people that we might not yet know. In the Gospel of Matthew, we see another example of just how important that is. Jesus was teaching that he often appears to us as a guest. He said, come, you who are blessed by God, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And the followers of Jesus heard these words, but they were confused. Lord, when were you hungry and thirsty? When were you a stranger? And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Jesus comes to us as a guest even now. When we help a person in need, we're helping Jesus. It happens when we're in the grocery store, when we're out taking walks. It happens in school, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces. I think it happens especially now when we stay home, when we wear masks, when we do everything we can to make 
at-risk populations a little safer. There are so many ways that we can help. Jesus' role shifted that day as they gathered around the table because he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he shared it. And that's when they recognized him. The disciples discovered that when we welcome a stranger, we welcome the Lord. The role of Jesus changed along the day from stranger to guest to host it happens especially when we gather around tables and break bread. Every time the bread is broken, we are invited to open our hearts to the presence of Christ. He comes to feed us, to fill us with his power and his presence, and we need to let him as Jesus becomes part of our lives, we learn to accept the forgiveness that he offers and we allow ourselves to be strengthened and inspired. We hear in the story that the disciples went out and shared the story of Jesus appearing to them. They proclaimed their faith, which is what they had been challenged to do. And it's our challenge as well to talk about the times and the ways that we have experienced God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our lives. Our stories will be different because we live different lives. Those differences are fine. They're part of the diversity of life in the church, especially a church that extends a fully inclusive welcome to all people. When we share our stories of faith, when we see value in everyone's story of faith, we strengthen our bonds with each other and we strengthen our bond with Jesus Christ. When we practice Christian hospitality, we better understand what it means to be a stranger, a guest, and a host. And we become part of a mighty spiritual movement because Jesus is walking with us. We have the opportunity every day of our lives, and especially this week, to start paying attention to the everyday stuff around us. What do you see? Who do you see? And how can we respond? How can we make a difference in this moment as we share our faith? Together, let's begin to pray about how we respond now in this moment and how our church together can respond as we come back together in the coming months, talking, walking, welcoming, blessing, and sharing. We have been called to all of these things. Let us pray. Merciful Savior, too often our eyes are dim as dim as those disciples who walked to Emmaus. You stand with us, you walk with us, but so often we are unaware and disconnected. We sit with you at the dinner table, but we look right past you. You speak to us, but our hearing can be dull. We read the scriptures, but often we fail to understand. Lord, we want to know you, to see you, to hear your word and apply it to our lives. Open our hearts and our minds. Speak to us through your spirit so that this word can move into the world, so that we can read and proclaim the good news, so that we can be changed by the truth of your resurrection, your grace, and your peace. Amen. As we prepare to close our time of worship today, our time of prayer and music and praise, I'll be sharing a blessing with you and then together we'll sing one more song. So this morning receive this blessing. May the God of the heavens cause you to soar. May the Christ of the journey make your feet light. May the spirit of power fill you with courage to go out into the world as a stranger, to open up your life and welcome people as guests, and to do all that you can to break bread with everyone that you meet.
Amen.